Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, three Portuguese wines in front of me today, two from the same producer and the same region, the Douro, but I'm starting off in the Alentejo uh, with Marques de Borba uh, 2011, made by the uh, eminent enologist uh, 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 João Portugal Ramos. Uh, so grapes here, there's a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon and Syrah in there, uh, but there's also some of the more traditional uh, Portuguese ones, Aragonés, also known as Tempranillo, Turiga Nacional and Alicante Boucher, a grape that um, was sort of like dismissed in southern France, but uh, seems to, uh, uh, in, in parts of the Alentejo, does make, make some really, really terrific and fragrant wine. Anyway, let's give it a whirl. Well, I stick my nose in there and there's a juicy, soft, just the right side of jamminess about it. It feels like it's going to be fresh and bouncy uh, and there's a fragrance about it as well. I don't know, there's, the Syrah I think goes always giving fragrance there, uh, but there's, there's fruit fragrance and there's, there's floral characters as well. It smells, it smells really good, nice perky, um, per, yeah, perky wine. I mean, it's, it's just before Christmas now. I don't know when I'll, I'll, when I'll get to posting this, but I imagine having this with turkey would be pretty good. Oh, and that's a pleasure to drink. Uh, oh, sorry, to taste. Um, it's got this rounded, rich, jolly fruit, um, uh, but it's got a freshness about it as well. It's got this earthy feel of the soil about it, and it's got the fragrance as well. Um, I'm not sure how much oak they've used here, but it feels unhampered by any over-woody characters, and um, jolly nice glug. I like that. Uh, next one I've got. Uh, well, the next two from the same winery. Uh, it's the... Um, the uh, Duorum winery. So this is their uh, Tons du Duorum. So I think this is their um, entry level wine. I can't remember how many tiers they've got. I think they've got they've got three tiers. So I've got the uh, lower tier and the middle tier. Anyway, this wine is the Tons du Duorum, uh, red 2010, and grapes. I imagine it's a typical Douro blend uh, with quite a bit of Turiga Nacional and Turiga Franca and Tinta Orange, uh, maybe pepped up by some of the other grape varieties. Anyway. I'll give it, a, give it a sniff. Well, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't smell quite as uh, vibrant and boi buoyant and boisterous as the, uh, as the Marques de Borba. It smells okay. Uh, there's this rounded, plummy, red berry character. Um, maybe a bit of damson in there. But it uh, just feels a little bit restrained. I don't know whether it, it needs to come out of its shell. Uh, but today, it just feels... It smells... It smells okay. Uh, but um, a hard act to follow. Anyway, let's taste it. Bit of toffee, this red berry and um, and plum. Um, it's okay, um, uh, but um, it doesn't have the extra mile for me. It's, it's a nice, juicy, honest drink, uh, but um, I think there's um, I think there are better Douro wines. Let's see whether the third one is a better Douro wine. So it's the uh, same vintage, uh, but it's called Douorum Coyeta. Coyeta just means. Uh, from a, uh, a vintage, really, and uh, some people put it on their uh, top glass wine. Some people just use it to uh, to denote that it's all from one year. Uh, but I, I think the ambition here is is slightly more. Uh, I don't know if it says anything on the back about uh, how how different uh, we're expecting it to be. Interesting thing is that they're all made by this guy Joao Portugal Ramos. Um, but um, it seems to be that uh, his Alentejo stuff. Well, on the on the on the uh, looking at those first two, uh, it seems to be he seems to be more at home with that style. Anyway, I may be uh, being pejorative. Let's try this one and see see how good he is in um, a tear up in the Douro. And this smells more interesting. There's a, there's a wilder edge here. Uh, there's a more confident, rounded berry feel as well. Um, it feels like the fruit is fresher. Um, it feels like it's more concentrated, but it doesn't feel like it's trying to, to uh, assault you with just with power. Uh, it feels like there's a bit of silkiness there, and I get a feel uh, more of a sense of soil here rather than uh, uh, rather than just winemaking. Yeah, quite classy wine that. Um, yeah, there's this richer, plummy edge, but. Um, it's, it's, it's got more structure to it as well. It's got acidity, it's got tannin, uh, and it's like the flesh is draped over it. So it's a stronger skeleton, but more flesh to drape over it. And uh, so the flavours I'm left with, there was a little bit, I was talking about that, that slight toffee edge. I get, I get a little bit of that, that uh, treacly sweetness here. Not, it's not, it, it, I, I, as I mean, the flavours rather than the sugar edge. Does that make sense? Just to me. Um, but then there's this lovely fruit. 
and it's a relaxed type of fruit. Um, whereas the first one was that you thought that was boisterous and fresh. Here, uh, through the art of élevage, the uh, the aging in the barrel, uh, it's just had some of its gawkier edges uh, knocked off. And because it was quite big and stern in the first place, um, that was that's no bad thing. Uh, and it's emerged in very tasty fashion actually uh, so I like it I like its richness it's, it's, got, it's, it's strange it's got soft fruit flavours uh, but uh, they're still ripe uh, it doesn't feel like they're aging too fast and um, just when you think it might just be a little bit too ripe and wobbly uh, you, you feel this backbone coming through uh, so um, yes probably toss it between that and the uh, and the Marcus de Borba uh, for which of these is my favourite but um, Maybe a dip in the middle with it with the tons, but uh, all have something to say. I have lots to say too, but not now. So I'll say goodbye. See you soon.